Hey, everybody. Sorry, it's a little bit dark in here. We don't have the greatest lighting in here. We're in a patrol in the middle of Tennessee. And so, um, you know, I wanted to kind of jump into some of the things that are at the back of the pain booklet. And even if you haven't had the pain class, we'll talk about some of the ways to augment some of the things that we we do for pain management. But before we do that, um, I always like to do a little Q&A for things that you guys are in the middle of and would like to know about. So go ahead and fire away. Hey, go ahead, Barbara. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Greg. I have an elderly friend who asked me today if there was any recommendations for minimizing um, symptoms with her second COVID vaccine on Friday? So, um, yeah, I, I would do. Um, she has an autoimmune skin disorder. She does, like uh, psoriasis or something else? Something else. Okay, so one of the things I'd do is I'd probably take um, a little bit of um, quercetin, or if she can, I don't know how she handles um, um, like a Benadryl or something like that. I usually have them take quercetin, you know, like maybe three capsules, a couple of days in a row, maybe three days at the most. So if she doesn't have it on hand, um, I don't know that she needs to buy it just for that. But the other thing that we've been having people do, and it's been working well, is um, a couple drops of lemongrass in, in um, some water and then drink it. And that usually minimizes the symptoms quite a bit. You know, a lot of times the symptoms are kind of like mild, mild symptoms, you know, mild COVID-like symptoms. They, you know, mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that they have COVID, but a lot of it is like um, achy joints. And um, lemongrass is really good for knocking that out. You're basically having a little bit of not just a reaction to the, to like, you know, you're getting a small dosage of the virus, but you're also having a little bit of an allergic reaction. And so, you know, it's basically another way of saying allergic reaction is, you know, it's a type of hypersensitivity, but um, uh, you're, you're dealing with a kind of an inflammatory response. And so, um, you, you know, sometimes even when you get like a mosquito bite and it raises up, that part of that is that it's an, actually an allergic response. And so um, just do things that you would do for, um, for that, you know, and, and a histamine of some sort. I mean, quercetin, why it works so well for allergies is, is um, crude vitamin C is a form of an antihistamine. And so, um, if there's high levels of vitamin C in the body, the body tends to not have that reaction or quite as severe reaction. And then a few drops of lemongrass, you know, maybe once, once a day, a couple days in a row, and she should be good. Like if it continues, she can continue to do the lemongrass for, you know, several more days, but usually after a couple of days, you're done. Okay, thank you. Yeah, did, did it warm up uh, up there with you guys? It's beginning to, it's supposed to be nice yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, we're in Tennessee. It's actually kind of warm today. And so um, like the snow has melted and it's it's getting, you know, getting to be the time of year where no jacket. Well, at least yeah. for this little moment. Kind of slushy here, but it'll come. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Thank you. Wendy? Hey, Wendy. Hey, uh, Greg, I was in the pain class and okay. I did almost all the protocols, okay. except uh, except the ones I, I don't do well with oils on my skin. So I can sometimes okay. I can use linen, but not very often. Okay, um, gotcha. Really, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Monday morning, I woke up and I had sciatic pain. Sciatic so pain now, on which side? On, on which side? Left side. Left side. Left side. Okay. And so when you say sciatic pain, like your your hip was hurting, it was radiating down your leg. Yep, and okay. it was it was more um, more nerve pain than it had before. It was nociceptive, and it okay. was just sort of general. And I could sort of live with it. And I was taking well benzyme, and you know, life was adequate. Okay. But after the pain class, yeah. I, I don't know whether my my theory is that enough of the lymph got distributed that there was no protection around that nerve. 
Well, well, actually, probably what happened is like so, sometimes what happens with nerve pain is when it becomes more extreme, it doesn't hurt more. And actually, the nerve goes to sleep. And so what part probably happened is you started taking some of the pressure off the nerve and um, it actually started waking up a little bit. That is uh, an occurrence that can happen with, with neuralgias of, of any sort and sciatica being a type of neuralgia. And so um, still continue to put things that reduce uh, spasms, focus really specifically on the nerve pain, you know, the, the, the that third segment. And, um, you, you know, the, the other thing with a sciatica that is really unique, um, um, it, it's different than other types of nerve pains because it's one of the few nerves that has actually some immune cells on the nerve itself and it can start to produce um, uh, allergic reaction you know, or your allergies can become agitated. And so kind of pay attention to that as well. And, um, you know, like we were just talking about before, you can do quercetin, um, or if you're, you know, using some sort of allergy medicine, you know, take it, even though it might not be allergy season for you, the sciatica can cause uh, elevated histamine levels in the body, and you can start to have actually kind of weird kind of allergies. And so um, um, that, that muscle that um, kind of compresses the sciatic nerve is right across the butt cheek you know it like kind of goes like that angle you know for, if you're doing the one side and so right in the middle of that butt cheek really keep putting you know things like marjoram or basil pedigrin you know something like that mm -hmm. and then um even put some things that are a little bit anti-inflammatory like um like if you have chem what, what do you have that's anti-inflammatory by the way do, do you have some like uh, chamomile or helichrysum yeah. or Okay, yeah, put, like, put, put that, and like you said, if your skin's a little sensitive to like massage oils, can you do lotions at all? Um, no, I don't, okay. well, I don't do know. Do it I'm in the alcohol base. Yeah, do, I'm gonna, what's I'm it? gonna try it. Um, I started getting a reaction in my, between my fingers from the liniment. Yeah, um, see, I, I wonder if that's even starting to be a little bit of your histamine's elevated. That probably means okay. that's been, been there well, a while. I would have expected it. Yeah. What what seemed to help was I inhaled some allergy support. Oh, good. And that seemed to help. But good. I've got anyway. I've got one spot that's you know red and weeping. Oh, in between, between the fingers. fingers. Yeah, boy, that's yeah. a little bit of a reaction. Yeah. Yeah, what happens sometimes is the, the, the skin, it's, again, it's not necessarily like an allergy per se, but it's like kind of in that, that realm of uh, allergic responses and you can become almost like um, hypersensitive. And um, so even if it's alcohol, um, uh, that does make it a little bit of a tough one. Now I did I did try using uh, the massage oil with some of the whatever we were using. I think it oh, was okay. the pain relief on my butt, and uh, that's not itchy, for which I am divinely grateful. Oh, good, 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 good. But, okay. But the hands, you know, the problem is yeah, to get whatever getting... it is. You got to use your hands. Now I could always try gloves. Yeah, or even stick your head in just a plastic bag, like, you know, a baggie, yeah. and then even yeah. if you don't have gloves, yeah. and put it on and then just throw the bag away. Yeah. 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 Keep, keep us posted and let us know how that's going. Because, you know, it's, um, boy, if you're starting to run out of options, you, you know, you, we could do it with, um, you remember the, the thing where we did the low back release? Yes. Yeah, you could do the low back release and the, the knee um, just to take pressure off of that nerve, but it's more the low back release will get it. Um, yeah. I mean, we might have to have you switch to that if, if the, you know, the skin's too sensitive. But um, yeah. I did that on myself uh, Sunday night after I was, you know, we were done with the class and everything. And I was like, God, I felt like I just got a massage on my back and legs. And right. so, um, 
you know, the thing that happens with sciatica too is like when that, that nerve gets really irritated, that muscle is irritated as well. And even when you start poking around on that, thinking to like try to massage it, you, you know, if, if the pressure gets to be too hard, it can, can aggravate it. So like sometimes even the inhalation, you know, when you're rubbing the oil on, that's, that's, that shouldn't irritate it. But if somebody was to get in there and try to massage it out, Sometimes it actually makes it worse for a little bit. So yeah, no, no. There's yeah, not you be want to kind of calm out. it down. Yeah, calm in it fact, down. I've been I've been bouncing on a mini trampoline to keep my lymph moving, and I'm sort of thinking I could lay off that for a day or two. Yeah, probably even three, maybe three days or so. Like give yourself like seventy-two yeah. hours to just let everything calm down. Because really, what you want to yeah. do is get that nerve to calm down. That's and if right. it's not coming I down, you let us know. Yeah, I gave up and took a couple of ibuprofen um, Monday afternoon, mm -hmm. and that that quieted things down. I took one more before I went to bed, and then when I got up this morning, I took Wobenzyme. And it's not okay. too bad, but it's there. Yeah, and you got to stay on top of it, like in, until yeah. it's kind of really starting to uh, diminish. You got to just stay on yeah. top of it. Yeah, Cyanide can be quite quite difficult to treat sometimes and so yeah just you keep, keep us posted because the sensitivity okay. does make it a little bit harder yeah yeah i'm going to do the quercetin um should i do the lemongrass um if only if the joints are achy like if your joints aren't okay, achy yeah, i mean okay. you could do it but you don't need to do it every day yeah okay yeah okay and i'll see if i can get some chamomile or helichrysum around me somewhere Okay. And you know, and I'll keep you in I'll keep you in the loop. Thank good. you so that, much. That, that should be super soothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Good. Keep us posted. Okay. I will. And Peggy, your hand was up earlier. Hey Miss Peggy. Hello, hello. Um I uh a couple things when you were what you were just discussing. Would uh, uh soaking be good for uh for that? Yeah, she could so that's another good idea. Yeah. Yeah, you could totally than jumping on a trampoline. Just an idea. Yeah. The well the trampoline is more for the lymph, but like the soaking might help. Um uh sometimes even with sciatica though, the hot water might even aggravate it a little bit. So really? it would have to be like like yeah, yeah, the, when that nerve gets irritated, boy, it gets it can get irritated really easily. And so um you could take like a, a warm bath, not a hot bath, but like a warm or even like kind of more of a cool bath, not cold, but cool. And then my next question was, um, I I have the lemongrass and was plant. I must have, maybe I misunderstood about taking it after I get my shot tomorrow. Uh, do, should I be taking it before and no, after? You just, no, you can definitely after. Okay, after, that's what I thought you said. Okay, uh, wonderful to see you guys. I'm glad you're safe and hopefully you're having fun. Uh, yeah, I've been traveling and, you know, it's kind of working and traveling. So it's just different environment. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. You're so welcome. How much quercetin did you say for them to take for the vaccine? Like two or three capsules. Is there a basically good oil to use in the salt bath for lymph cleansing in general? Uh, lymph cleansing, um, uh, you know, there's the lymphatic blend. Um, the chocolate root cleanser also does it, but then you can use things like um, bay laurel is very good for the lymph nodes. Um, I mean, helichrysum is amazing. It's just it's a little bit of an expensive bath. Um, uh, but even uh, rosemary can be super helpful. Um, pine, a uh, little bit of juniper. The only thing with juniper is if the bath is real hot, sometimes it can be a little sensitizing to the skin. Um, uh, you know, it's just, will make it a little bit red. And so um, just don't make the bath as hot. When the bath is hot, the pores open up more and it makes it like easier for your skin to react, if that makes sense. So things you might not really have reactions to, you might in a really hot bath. Any more questions from the weekend? Or yeah, weekend or anything goes. Like anything you guys are, are needing to talk about. 
This is your most accessible time to Greg. Yes, go ahead, Shannon. Hey, Shannon. Hey guys, um, I just wanted to give you some feedback from this weekend because of uh, that injury in my right wrist that has has been nagging me for a few years now. Okay. Um, the protocol with the the spray that we did, the marjoram, and yeah. the um, oh my gosh, this is the best I've felt in in years. Oh, good, so good, that, good. It's not popping anymore um, when I'm moving it, and my range of motion is much better than it's been in years. So I just wanted to thank you. That was such an amazing class. Good. And so don't feel that you need to just do it every once in a while. I mean, you know, do it uh, every maybe two or three days and just stay on top of it and get it feeling better. And, um, you know, hopefully it, it gets better and just doesn't return. Yes, that sounds great. And then my daughter last night was complaining of um, the last few nights she's not been able to sleep well. And she says her bones have been aching, but she doesn't have a fever or any other symptoms, just not sleeping well with achy, achy bones and muscles. So I kind of did some marjoram and a little protocol yeah. on her as well. But uh, any how, did, how did that treat her? How did that treat her? She slept well last night. Okay. And how, how old is she? She is going to be 21 in April. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. So, um, achy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, if she felt good with the marjoram, um, you could have her do a couple drops of lemongrass grass in, in the water. Um, if she's still feeling that, but, um, okay. mar marjoram, I, I mean, it takes the tension out of the body. It, it um, shifts, you, uh, into more of a rest and repair mode. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if it worked, I mean, I'd just say stick with it. I mean, because here's the thing, too, is like um, sometimes insomnia is actually a byproduct of allergies. And so um, if the body calmed down and that's all it was and it worked, then it worked. You know what I mean? I would say, like, don't don't need to, like, try different things. If, it, if it's, you know, getting her to sleep and she's feeling better the next day, then... Um, then I wouldn't worry about it. But if it continues, then so you can still do the same protocol, but just augment it with a little bit of lemongrass and water. Okay, perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. You're so welcome. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Kathy. A um, couple questions. Uh, like I wanted to order a Neroli. There's one that's $95 and one that's $35. What is the difference? Oh, uh, well, there's a Neroli Supreme that's blended with... Um, because neroli is the um, orange blossom and so um, th that one is the orange peel the orange the orange flower and then um, uh, two kinds of pedigree in it and so it's like a way to make the the neroli more affordable but the neroli that's 95 dollars is pure neroli like it's just orange blossoms and what would be the difference in using it? What would you notice? What would be worth? Well, if you're using it for emotional, psychological effects, um, they're very, very similar. If, if you're using it for spasms in the body, it's still pretty similar, but the neroli would be a little bit stronger by itself. For spasms more than? Yeah, like spasms. If you're treating like, you know, a neroli is good for some, some actually physical heart issues. But if you're just wanting to wear it or you're using it for... Um, 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 like a little bit of, um, you know, supporting the nerves or reducing anxiety or a little bit of emotional hit, you know, because Neroli is very uplifting. And so um, it's a very common one to use like in perfumes and things. And so um, uh, you can get away with the inexpensive one for that. Okay. You know, but if, if you're treating the hard boy health issues, um, I'd get the, you know, the other one. But if you're just wanting to wear it, I get the inexpensive one. Well, I mean, I do have heart issues. So you're saying that, that the regular Neroli would be really good for heart issues or? It, it, it does help with, um, yeah, with some of the tension and spasms and, and um, yeah, tensions in the heart. But for that, you would actually take it internally. Okay. 
You um, take a couple of drops internally. The other one would still work. It just wouldn't work as well. Okay. Now I get confused because I want to order something, say like cedar or uh, for, mm -hmm. sometimes there's like five different kinds, and I'm just on your, you know, the website. Yeah, they're, they're all they're all um, they're all going to function like cedar. They just have different scents, and like sometimes people will get one that they like a little bit more than others, you know, because they don't always smell the same. And so, um, but the properties are pretty, pretty close. And so the only one that's probably a little bit more fancier um, is the Japanese cedar. But um, again, I'd probably use that more for um, emotional healing than I would for physical healing. And so if you're using it for physical stuff, it, any of them will work fine for you. Okay. And then I have a friend who has bad bunions. I mean, do, would oils help something like bunions? Yeah, actually, so with bunion, bunion is, um, you take the, the Taggett's oil. Taggett's? You know, the Taggett's, yeah. And you would mix it in with um, a bunch of like massage oil, like, you know, six, eight drops, and then put some lotion or massage oil in the hand and then just rub it all over the foot, not just on the bunion, but the whole foot. And do that like every night uh, as the person gets ready to go to bed. And you know, you're not gonna make the bunion go away, but you can stop it. You can slow down like it getting a little bit bigger, but it will take a lot of the pain out. Okay. Yeah, usually, I mean, usually. Sometimes they start to get kind of bad, but I mean, anything foot related, that Taggett's oil is, is really good. If um, if you want to have it just like kind of turnkey and ready to go, that we, we do make an ointment um, called Soothing Foot Rub that's got like Taggett's and um, Spikenard and Venver, you know, things that's just real super relaxing and soothing and kind of cooling to the feet. Um, and it's already in that blend of oil um, or with uh, tamanu, like tamanu and sesame oil and moringa and all that. and. Um, you know, it's all blended and ready to go. So you just kind of shake it up and then pour it in your hand and rub on. And it, it will last quite a while. So, and it's, um, you know, I can't remember how much it is, but it's, it, no, it's, I actually about, the, it. it, it, it's I, about the price of the five mil bottle of tax. So, yeah, no, I have it and I love the smell of it. You know, I just yeah, yeah. got that from, for myself. Yeah, um, yeah. Also, if, if for oils that you just want to help your meditation, like to, that's the only purpose. What mm -hmm. are maybe a top couple, two or three? Well, so, so like, um, there, there's like a couple ways to look at it. Um, you know, some of the real fancy oils are really super good for that. But so I'll talk about some and then in like within a budget, and then I'll tell you some of the more fancy ones. Okay. So um, one that we don't really think about too often and we use all the time for meditation is just your good old fashioned Issa. Very activating to the heart, very activating to the crown. You know, it's, it's really super cost effective. You can inhale it, it will do it by, by itself. If you inhale it and put your awareness on the heart and crown, it will deepen that. Um, uh, another one that is really good for meditation, um, and you, again, you wouldn't think of it, is um, tarragon. Tarragon, really super good. It actually is stimulating to the pineal gland, which is um, associated with greater levels of like oneness. So if you're doing like a oneness meditation, something like that, very good for that. Um, see mugwort, another one that's really super, super good. So artemisia or mugwort, um, very, very good for meditation. Um, any of the spruces usually can work very good. Um, my, my particular favorite is um, Sitka, which is a type of spruce. Um, that's a fancy type of spruce. Um, that's Sitka. really good for meditation. Um, Sitka. Sitka. So I'm typing it in for you. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, let's see, frankincense, another one, really super good for meditation. Um, and if you're wanting something that's like a little bit more like kind of flowery and heart centered, but still within a budget, um, something like geranium could be very good for that. Um, the Egyptian geranium has a little bit more of um, uh, kind of kind of an effect of like helping you to let go. You know, it's like intoxicating is not the right way, but it just it kind of puts you in a different mindset is a, is a great way to say it. Um, and then as you start kind of climbing out of there, um, 
uh, cystus is really super good for for meditation. I love it starts cystus. to be yeah, starts to be a little bit more expensive, but can be really pretty valuable for meditation. Um, and then you start getting kind of into the fancy realm where it could be ginger lily, it could be uh, tuberose. Um, you know, the roses are always good. Um, you know, somebody was just talking about neroli. Neroli and Melissa are, are very good for that. Um, uh, your poplar balsam, really super good for meditation. And then the kind of the ultimate for meditation would be like tuberose, ginger lily. Um, and then uh, aloes wood. And uh, aloes wood doesn't have to be the super crazy expensive one. You know, the one that's the, um, the sea grape is it's a really good bang for your buck. It's, it's not the crazy, I mean, it's still expensive. You know, it's like about the price of neroli, like maybe just $5 more or something than neroli. But um, good bang for your buck. And, um, uh, you know, you get all the benefits of using aloes. And aloes really helps things to, um, helps you to like detach and let go. And so like when they take, when they took the body of Christ off the cross, they covered his body in aloes and myrrh. And um, a lot of the really expensive um, incense for meditations, it's usually aloes based. You know, like the, um, the, Zen monks a lot of times will wear um, malas made out of aloes wood. So um, kind of depends on what you're shooting for. Um, I mix it up a little bit. Um, uh, I love me some cystus. I do cystus a lot. Um, but last night I was doing aloes. Like I, I was doing a little aloes meditation and oh man, it was hard to get out of bed this morning. <laughs> Well, in one of the discussion groups or something, you talk about uh, poplar balsam, and mm -hmm. and you it made me want it, but it's very expensive. So I don't know, if, you know. <laughs> it is pricey. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a bit pricey, but um, is there a good? We're trying. To, we're we're trying to get our hands on um, the hydrosol. So you can get some of the benefits, but at a lower cost, you know, especially if you're using it for meditation, if you're using it to treat something, the hydrosol probably would be strong enough. But if you're using it for meditation, you know, you could kind of spray down a little bit or spray your hand and then sit and inhale it. And it would be a reduced, re, uh, reduced cost. And so um, we've asked the distiller if we can buy the, the hydrosol from, from their distillation. And we haven't heard back yet, so we're, we're we're thinking that we can get it. We just don't know what the price is going to be or how much we can get. Now, would there be a blend that has poplar balsam, but would be definitely more affordable? That might be good for meditation in particular. Or? Yeah, probably. Um, let me look it up. But um, gratitude is is made for that. Um, gratitude and um, serenity. I think serenity has it in there as well. Let me double check here. Gratitude, 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 gratitude has, um, it's it's uh, conductivity. Yeah, it's just like super conducted for either healing or for meditation. And did you say serenity does have it in it or? Um, I'm double checking. Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And Barbara, your hands raised. Thanks. Um, Greg, I had one of the best night's sleep Saturday. And I'm, oh, wondering, really? I'm wondering what protocols or what of the maybe oil blends and maybe it was Delta waves. I don't know, but if you have. It could, it could have been both because you know that that was the thing until we got to the psychosomatic thing. Um, psychosomatic, it mixes it up of, of um, the waves that we're working, but um, the other protocols that are pretty primarily almost all Delta. And so, um, uh, you know, we're taking tension out of the body, we're doing that. So it was probably the, the protocol for the no susceptive pain um, is my guess, but 
Um, Eva and Samantha was saying that um, she had wild dreams, didn't you see? Had like really crazy dreams Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And she was like, who would have known with a pain class? You know, you almost expect them with the esoteric classes, but like with, with just the pain class, you're thinking of it just being super clinical and everything. But, you know, with the way that we're going through and treating it, you're really trying to take tension out of the body. You're trying to shift the brain around. You're trying to diminish the psychological components. So we really try to take a very, um, uh, kind of, you, you know, I, I know people throw this, this term around, but a really holistic look at pain and not just look at the symptom and using natural substances, but really look at the body as a whole when we're dealing with pain. And, and when you go through and you start unwinding it, everybody's got some nociceptive pain to a certain degree. And so when you go through and you treat it and you make it feel better, um, and, you know, it, it, it really takes some tension out of the body. It, it is by far the most common type of pain. Even if people don't register that they have that kind of pain, everybody definitely has that discomfort. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah the, the dreams yeah. were a little wild that night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's probably because of the, um, the delta waves and, and the nociceptive one was the only one we did the full protocol for. You know, we did the half of the nerve pain protocol. And so all of that is stimulated delta waves, like everything that we did stimulated delta waves, so. Thank you. You're so welcome. And um, Paulina, I'm actually gonna let you unmute. I'm gonna show Greg your, the picture you sent um, so you can check in with him. Yeah, yeah, listen. The light on it. And Paulina, how long has this been there? Uh, several um, We went to Acapulco, and this went. Uh, this came with the sun. He went with a dermatologist, and he says it's nothing, but it's very red, and he has been putting. Very uh, nice. And he has been putting tree tree, and it's it's better. But it doesn't go away, so I don't know what else. Try, to try putting helichrysum on it. Helichrysum? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can put it in with uh, with a little bit of massage oil or lotion, but do it like maybe twice a day. Twice a day. Okay. Yeah. And and I want to ask you another thing about the about the thank you, Samantha. Samantha. Um, you remember I told you about the woman that she has a lot of pain. Uh, I, I am going to treat her and I'm going to ask for you uh, for oils. She lives in the United States and I want yeah. to treat her. So what I have to do so she doesn't have pain anymore. She has to breathe with the um, protocols you gave us uh, Saturday and Sunday. But uh, what, what protocol, what page? Like what? What? What are we talking about? Is it you like remember the, I, I don't. I'm sorry. You remember yeah. the woman oh, that the she had with the, the sciatica, and you have yeah, from the hip points, the psoas. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The psoas. The psoas, psoas, not sciatica. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Have her do the the. Remember, we're going to do the spinal release tonight. Mm -hmm. So you could do what we're about to do and then have her do the, the low back release. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then if you want to do um, a bit more, um, that would fall under uh, nerve pain. So you could go back to the segment for nerve pain and have her do those four steps as well. Okay. And what, what oil do you think is best for her? for um, doing the spinal release. Uh, we're gonna run through it right now. And then for the low back would be HISA. But then with, with that, I would, I would stick with like the nerve pain blend and uh, the ones that are in, in that. Is, that. is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I wanted to ask you about the course of uh, Saturday and Sunday, the next course. Can you tell me uh, what, uh, what are you going to talk about because I have been taking a lot of courses of you and I need to settle down and see. If you <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah um, so we're going to talk all. about. Um, I want it out, you know, but. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Slow down okay, and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes. So um, we're talking about like the psychotherapy is actually kind of the next step. And so the thing that we'll be talking about is the, the first day is kind of the outwardly driven um, uh, aspect of like dealing with stress, fears, traumas, um, elementals and um, even aggression and things from other people. Um, mm -hmm. Just basic things to go through and do cleanup. So depending on what it is, we'll talk about how to evaluate each one, just like we evaluated the pains. We'll talk about how to evaluate each one and uh, go through and treat that. And then the, on Sunday, we're gonna be, you know, most people where we tend to be more um, um, outwardly focused and um, Sunday is about more about um, being able to turn it inward and deepening our um, level and degree of experience. And so it treats the psychological components to a much deeper level. And, um, you know, it allows for healthy outer expression and increases your ability to turn uh, inward. Right. And then, um, yeah, so that's what we'll be covering with those two days. And then the following weekend is clairvoyance, which is kind of a natural stepping stone from, from the okay. psychological. It's still about increasing the sensitivity. So we're kind of, we did kind of a one, two, three weekend where they all kind of build on each other. And I think you've already had the clairvoyance yes. class. So that one would yes. be a review for, for yes. you. So I, can, yes. I, I can make the review, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Once you have the class, you can review it for free. Okay, so, uh, but you are going to give it again, the, the one that you are going to give some Saturday and Sunday, uh, in another, like in this year? Uh, um, well, you can always get it, um, even if we're not teaching it, and do the recordings. I mean, sometimes people will buy the class and, and just do the recordings later, but mm -hmm. um, I'll probably do it, but I don't know when. You know, it might not be till the end of the year or something. Okay, okay, but I need yeah. to settle down a little bit and do what I have, you know? Yeah, I, I hear you, yeah. Thank you so, so much. You're so welcome. And for and for my sister from fibromyalgia, I'm going to ask a kit. Uh, if you can give me a kit for fibromyalgia, I can give it to her and help her to do the- Do we have a kit for fibromyalgia? I don't think we have a fibromyalgia kit. We'll look at the protocol and see if yeah. we can make one. I'll see if okay. we can pull a kit together. Um, okay. But definitely, you got the PDF, right, Paulina? Yes, thank you so much. I'm going to, to work with my sister so she can help her. Okay, thank you so much. You're, you're so welcome. And Jenny? Hey, Miss Jenny. Hey, Greg. Hey, Sam. Um, I actually wasn't in class over the weekend for the first time in a long time, but I spent the entire weekend with you in the Planetary Cycles recording. Oh, good for you. <laughs> so is it okay for me I to- I thought I had dreams about planets. I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been having some crazy ass dreams, but I wanted to ask about a question on planets. Is that okay to do? Yeah, right yeah. By, by way. Greg, I am ready to deepen the experience um, oh, with the, with the plan. I am, yeah. I am ready. And by you know, the, you were talking about that the last time I was up there. And so I started looking at like, how can we do that and everything? And uh, it kind of caused a, a little bit of a problem because then I came up with like looking at the notes and my old notes and everything. I was like, actually, I could do two or three classes, not just one class. I, sign me up. Yeah. I will be present for that. Yeah. I'm just so ready <laughs> because I'm at the point where, um, well, anyways, I'll just leave it at that. I'm I'm yeah. super ready, and I'm wondering, there is the alchemical process PDF where you have four applications by zodiac sign. I am actually not sure if that's what you meant by there's a second part to it, or if it's something else. There's there's that part. Um, there is that I, part. I don't but have I, the oils for the Greek gods, but I have all the others. Right. right. Um, there is that the part. No, you, you, I mean, you can sit and do it. I would say only do it maybe um, one at a time. Actually, what we're probably going to be doing is um, instead of doing it, you know, because here's the difficulty is like a lot of times the classes are laying the foundation for deeper levels of study and, and work. 
you know, we did that with the, the way we laid out the angels. We did that with um, the materialization classes and, um, you know, it helps condition the, the person because yeah, if you go and do the, the harder, stronger thing, sometimes the body or the uh, psyche is a, is a um, prep yet. Like, mm -hmm. you know, too much stress has been in the body. Too many things have been going on and you kind of have to uh, clean up the physiology a little bit before you go through and do the deeper work because it gets um, really super intense. Um, you know, uh, and so we're, we're looking at like ways of starting to go deep, like to a much deeper with some of the classes. So mm -hmm. that class that we're doing, um, actually it's supposed to, yeah, the one with Seattle is um, going, starting to go down that road where we're starting to embrace some of the deeper teachings, but not making it so it's, um, a little bit of everything, we're gonna go down one rabbit hole, like deep. And so it, it is a little bit of a change up of how we've been doing things. Like, you know, basically um, when we do like the planets or the tree of life, or we're covering all the energy centers or all the planets, um, that one class that we're talking about for Seattle, it is um, really deep work on just the crown chakra. I mean, that's all it's going to be about is the crown chakra. And so um, the planet, I have to go back and look at my notes. I want to say even so there's some planet work in there, but it's not uh, some of the classic planets. It's some of the mm -hmm. other aspects of it. Okay. And, you know, this goes back to not the current astrology, but this goes back to the um, old alchemical and esoteric uh, astrology. And so... Um, that's actually going to be presented in a series of 11 classes throughout the year. So you, you will get the deeper work in some of those classes, but the, the class that you're talking about, the, the one with the Greek gods and, and all that, um, that definitely takes it deeper, but we're going to take it even deeper than that. So is that the, when you were talking about, there's a second part to it, specifically at the Mercury section, was that the right class? Was that the class you're talking about with the Greek gods? Or is that, um, that takes it deeper, but it's what we're going to start presenting through through the year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. I was figuring out, like, I, you know, it, one of the things that we were talking about, even like to do the brain waves, like really super deep, we almost can't like do it all in a, in a weekend because it's just way too intense. Like, it's just, uh, all we can do is like talk about most of it and then maybe do some of it. So here, instead of getting spread too thin and trying to jump around, uh, we're just going to go down one rabbit hole like really, really well. I love you, that. You know, it's not it's not something that we could have started off with, um, but now that we have the foundation of the classes, I mean, this is actually because of Zoom. I, I really didn't think we were even going to be able to start teaching those classes for probably three or four more years. Like, so, you know, I had them in my notes, but I wasn't really going, okay, let's, let's start firing these classes off. And then, you, you know, there's a huge group of people that have taken a bunch of the classes now. And so, uh, you know, I was looking at the overall layout and um, I was like, we, we did four or five years worth of work in, in a single year. I mean, you know, because most times people would only see me like three or four times a year. And so we were having to gauge like, okay, by the time we get through those areas and if we don't repeat classes too often, you know, within about three years, there'll be a good enough foundation for this next level and maybe four years. And um, now we're, we're already there. We, we were already starting to be there towards the end of last year. And I was like, boy, next year, I think we can actually start doing it. And, you know, so here we go. And so, um, so if these, I wanted... we were even doing that with um, uh, last year when we were doing things with Asara, we were going to do, um, you know, there's different kinds of fire ceremonies and everything. And so even when I was getting ready to, to do uh, one of the classes, um, 
it wasn't even a class. It was just an event that we were doing. Um, I was going to do a fire ceremony that's like an old school, you know, old school hardcore fire ceremony. And I was like, uh, it might be too soon. We go, we're, I think we're going to have to have like study groups and meditations and, you know, the guys that have been doing the oils and everything, you guys are ready. But like, you, you know, um, just to throw it out to the, the general students that hadn't been prepping for more intense work like this. Um, we even, I, I decided to like hold back on doing the fire ceremony, but we're gonna do it this year um, on the, what is that, what is it? Memorial Day or Labor Day? That's the one in um, May. Memorial. Memorial Day, yeah. So yeah. we're gonna do the, the fire ceremony and Memorial Day weekend. And so, um, you know, with the classes we've been doing there, like I think there's enough prep work and we've been getting good turnouts and, and you know, we did the Michael class and we did, you know, we did some good intense classes. I, th I think it's, it's good for the ones that have been turning up, but I think they're ready. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just have to do a little bit of prep work because um, even for me doing the ceremony, it's flipping intense. Like it's super, super intense. And so, um, you know, it's going to be uh, an, uh, definitely a deeper level this year. We're still going to do our normal classes, but for the ones who want to go a little bit deeper and go a little bit harder at it, um, you know, uh, we're going to do it. And so, you know, we had a, fr a friend who was in one of the classes and, and um, uh, she, she also had a friend who was in the class that had been around oils for a long time. And, um, you know, the person had a very intense experience when, when they did the class. And uh, the friend who, you know, has always been doing these classes and everything, and she was like, yeah, it was a good class. It was, you know, it was just, you know, she's used to it. And she goes, I forget how intense it's, it's you know, we're doing really deep work. Like, it's not just, um, like, just kind of aromatherapy. You know what I mean? We're doing, like, really deep work. And and aromatherapy at the same time. We're using aromatherapy, but it's not the standard uh, aromatherapy that people think of. I mean, we're doing really, really super intense work with these plants, so. If you, um, so if I wanted to deepen the experience with the seven classic planets, should uh, I just work that, should I just continue to just work that booklet and just stay there until the next class? Yeah, the next class is the one in uh, Seattle. Yeah, so should I just keep re Yeah, I would keep looking the booklet? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Keep looking that until then. Because yeah, there, are, there are definitely things that are blowing up just like you said it would. Yeah. But I know, I know when to step in and step out. I know like this is just going to pass, like it's just part of the process. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, sac the sacred fire class was the foundation for 11 other classes yeah I mean we're basically going to go through the energy centers chakra by chakra angel by angel holy you know holy name of God by you know the the spirits you know the whole bit the brain wave that affects each center the planet you know where we're going to take it deep thank you Greg yeah you're so welcome Oh, and I will be in class this weekend. Okay. Oh, great, great. <laughs> what do you have to say about comfrey? Comfrey is very nice. It's very soothing to the skin. There's no essential oil for it, but um, very good for topical applications. Um, you know, good in, in combinations can stand on its own and um, can, you know, like sometimes if you have like a comfrey like ointment already made, you could add essential oils to it. Yeah. Sonia, do you have a question or? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, like the, uh, the, my, my jaws T and TMJ in my right face have increased in spasm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I, I think it involves the trigeminal nerve. 
it involves the trigeminal nerve. Usually you don't see, it, that would be like more like on this part of the face, like, like this, rather than over here. What, what, what's the symptom? My whole right face is in spasm. It, it pulls my jaw. But up T, TM, TMJ's over here. Like, so trigeminal nerves over here. So what, what, I, what, what parts happening? Both. Uh, my, my, I mean, my I right. Is this full side of your face? Yeah, and my, my, the TMJ, it, it's, it's worse on the right, but it, on the left, it's tightened up too. You have intention and spasms in other parts of your body? Uh, uh I have a, le Left, left side and right face mild spastic paralysis. And uh, yeah, a diaphragm spasm. It, it, it's tight. It's not in spasm, right? Full spasm. Okay, so, so you have par paralysis on the side. On left side and right face, spastic okay. paralysis. Yeah, the paralysis throws a whole nother thing into it. Um, Any uh, pitta or hot oils uh, seem to aggravate stuff. Mm, okay. Um, so have you tried like things that are cool, like spikenard and vetiver, things like that? Yeah. Okay. And any any benefit or no? Uh, it, it, if it does, it like it it only stays a short while. By well, the end yeah, of the I mean, you're, you're dealing with paralysis, so like you'll have to do it pretty repeatedly. Yeah. Uh, so I'm used. To doing uh, well, uh, uh, marjoram and um, spikenard and hyssop and um, and I anti spas spasmophilia and uh, glory of Lebanon. The spasmophilia help at all? Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, it doesn't last very long. But, but you're dealing with paralysis, so you, you'll have to treat it like multiple times a day. Like it's not going to be put on and have the paralysis go away. I mean, if that's, if you're dealing with paralysis, you're, you'll have, you'll have to keep repeating and repeating and repeating. And then you look at it, like, where's it at in three months, six months, nine months. You know, that's a very chronic degenerative condition. And so you really have to keep treating it consistently and not look at it as like, a, a, you know, a couple of days of treatment. You have to look at it almost like in large segments, you know, because you're dealing with such a drastic thing that's happened in the body that you just have to treat it consistently for a while. Even if it's starting to feel a little bit better, you keep treating it until it feels um, substantially better. Well, I mean, it, it sucks, but it's like it's it's you know when when something's kind of it's like how if somebody has a degenerative hip where it's bone on bone, even if you put stuff on it, it feels good. The next day, it's probably not going to feel good again. So you have to keep doing it over and over and over again. And so paralysis fall, falls definitely into that realm. Uh, I I put the oils in in my salt baths as well. I use six cups of sea salt, and you know. I mean, I've gone through you know, bottles and bottles and bottles of. Let's have, you, let's have you use the the spasmophilia on your your neck and, and face a, a little bit. You know, add it in an oil that your your skin on your face can handle, and really cover you know the the face as much as you can, down the neck and into the shoulder, around the base of the skull and down back. And I mean, we'll have to look 
excuse me, we'll have to look at it like at like 30, 60 days out and just see where, where it's at now and where it's at in 60 days. Like you, you, you really have to treat it for like, like, you know, it's like a big picture, like it's like playing chess versus checkers. You know, you have to be a little bit more strategic and be more like longer thinking with, with treatment. And would she apply like two, three times a day? Yeah, like if you can do it three times a day, I would do it three times a day. Yeah. Yeah. Because if it's truly spasmophilia, it, it takes a while and like you can even inhale it, um, you know, several times uh, a day. Um, we can make you a, a stronger version of, of the spasmophilia. I don't really make it and put it out, uh, but I have a stronger formula because we, we can add a lot more neroli to it and, and uh, make it a bit stronger that way. But um, uh, I would use what you have right now and, and then, you know, let's see how it's reacting. And then if we want to go to the stronger version of it, we can, we can do that. But let's just even see if we're on the right track with consistent treatment for, you know, like a good 30 days, but even a little bit longer, like 60 days. Because you're really wanting to uh, uh, try to undo as much as you can the effects of the paralysis. Um, yeah, when we did the risk, when you, in the weekend, when you did the wrist hand thing, I did it to my shoulder and my uh, neck and uh, uh, upper thoracics and my face and my jaws directly on. And then I was breathing it. And then uh, when I also ended up doing the spinal release after the thing. And oh. so I thought, you know, uh, it, it, instead, it, it increased the spasm. So yeah, I, 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 I thought I'm going. I don't know, and I, and I. Uh, yeah, see I, that 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 can still fall within the realm of spasmophilia because you're starting to get more movement. You're starting to get more detoxification, and spasmophilia. The thing with spasmophilia, that's why I'd like you just to focus on spasmophilia is the that uh, it just takes a moderate amount of stimulation, activity, movement, emotions, anything, and that area will go into a spasm. And so I, 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 I need, I'm, I'm suspecting that it's a type of spasmophilia, but um, uh, we, the only way we can really know is by going through and treating it like this for a little while. Yeah, and I had used the cinnamon and the peppermint before you yeah. said it can yeah. increase seizures, and I have seizures. <laughs> so like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So do the do the spasmophilia like two to three times a day, and you know report back in about thirty to sixty days. Okay. Okay, and just really focus on on those particular oils, yeah, or or that blend, you know, things like basil, pettigrain. Neroli or the blend itself. And Paulina, your hand is raised. Hey, Paulina. I have a friend that she is like um, with boyfriends. The boyfriends, they don't come. Uh, you remember that we took the course of protection, psychic protection. Uh, there is something that she can do with the uh, uh, oils that she can uh, take off that uh, thinking and uh, change the thinking for that the boyfriends they will come to her life. There is something. Wait, say, say, she's say on, so she's taking the psychic protection class, but she's wanting to bring a boyfriend into her life. And uh, no, uh, my friend. Uh, she, you remember I told you that my friend uh, had um like a witchcraft. And uh, they make that she doesn't, she will not have any boyfriends. She was like burned. Like she was like, you know, she was like dead in the, in the earth. You remember? And you told us. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah. And you told yeah. us, in, well, you told us in the class that there was something in the psychic class that we can do. And I did it with her and everything was okay. But now. Uh, she doesn't have any boyfriend because they do something that she, the boyfriends or the, the guys, they don't come to her. There's something to do with the oils that she can 
bring the do, have, have, her, have her do things from the materialization class. Like okay. just uh, visualize a partner and have her run through the materialization steps. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we do actually have materialization three, not in a great order, but we do have materialization three on YouTube right now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was a free class. Yeah, it was a free, it was a free class. We did materialization what? three. I, ju I just gave it to the students. Yeah. Yeah, it was on Tuesdays, like this. Yeah, Guys, yeah. this is oh, great, great, great source. It's yeah. on there on YouTube. I'll send you the link. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll send you the link and you can just send yeah. her the link and she can follow along and do it. Okay, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you. Go ahead, Shannon. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. I don't know. Maybe I had called the wrong person. Um, Greg, I was wondering just if, sorry, this is Letty. I was wondering yeah. about the, high, the magnetism um, of the energy body for that, for that girl. Wait, say that again. So I was wondering if maybe magnetism of the energy body for that lady that Pauline is talking about. Oh, uh, probably just a bit, yeah. The, um, that's actually doing something a little bit different, even though that, that's like the old term magnetism. And so it's, mm. it's doing something uh, a little bit different than like materialization or, and so um, uh, the, t the term's the same, but that's why I don't use a lot of the old alchemical ter terms is like mm -hmm. sometimes they don't fit with the modern terms. And so okay. I, I try to just like boil it down to, they're talking about actually with the magnetism aspects in the blood is what they're actually talking about. And so, um, I, you know, I put it in the notes and like, as, as time goes by, I'm like, eh, you know, the, I don't know that that will make it into the explanation when, when it goes into book form, but it will, it will be, you know, referenced at some point, but probably not in the general classes. Okay, what about raising her vibration? I would probably just start off with just doing the like the straight up like materialization sure. part and then eventually the vibration. Yeah, that can definitely be in there. Yeah. But okay. right off the bat, we just gotta get the the something coming our way. Like, you know, like sometimes when somebody's been in a situation for a long period of time, you know, like even if something's not happening, they're still, you, you know, you've been throwing out like little leaders for potentials. And when something has been shut down for a while, sometimes you just gotta kind of juice it up and just start things for our, for bringing something in, and then you start tweaking it. Um, that would definitely be the case, but um, uh, probably just start off with the materialization thing right off the bat. And what about the um, angel Yael? So just she can like um, maintain that protection because if she says they're doing witchcraft on her, yes. Yeah, it's pre that's pretty done. Even like when I look at it right now, it, it looks like it's just like she's just got to get the, if there was still a bunch of things going on, yeah, yeah, all would be very good. But um, I, I think she's probably okay right now. It's just more of just getting things coming, like starting to come her way. But boy, look at you making all these references and stuff. Like, I don't <laughs> have to be you, on my sorry. game with you. <laughs> I love that you're studying this stuff so much. <laughs> <laughs> she's better now very a lot yeah better. yeah she's doing because i mean i was looking at her while you were talking about it and um yeah she, she it, it just she just needs to get something kind of going out and coming back in again like it does it, it looks almost like um like there's little movement back and forth so if you just get the movement going yes nice guys good questions yeah we do have some more Wait, check out Lenny with all those like Details like make them want to get Yale just in case right now. Um, Thank you, ladies. Sorry, I do have all your notes. I mean, so I know, I know. That That's is. why I'm like, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to ask you, and I am like, where is it that <laughs> you're my black queen encyclopedia? <laughs> I think you remember it better than I do. <laughs> I have a question for Letty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I do have a question for Letty. So the materialization three video that Sammy just mentioned, is that the same? Should we reference the materialization three PDF for that video as well? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Letty oh, um, made the PDF from that. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Letty. your answer. Thank yes. you. Uh -huh. Oh, and I can get that to you guys too here um, before the end of the night. I'll get that um, 
materialization three PDF over um, in the chat here. Or Letty can because she's really good at that too. Yeah, she's good and she's fast at it. <laughs> I think I have it through a link on the website though. Um, someone asked, is there a protocol for unwinding old whiplash? Um, it's, yeah. Um, it, it's actually a little bit involved. I, I haven't sat down and like taught a class. You know, we were talking about that after the um, the pain class on the weekend was, um, you know, we, we could actually do a whole class on the weekend for whiplash, but I mean, that's not going to be a super popular thing, but like what we might do is we might do it over like a holiday weekend. And even if nobody really attends it, we'll, we'll just record it and then we can throw it up on the on the site and then you guys can go and just access it that way you know because the other thing is like in when we were doing the pain class is um i also have a whole bunch of notes on like trigger points and and how to manage very specific pain patterns and trigger point activity and you know um, we were actually going to start busting that stuff out for um some massage schools we were going to start teaching at um, at the beginning of last year, and then COVID happened, and so I just I didn't put my attention on um, finishing up those those notes and getting them ready to go out to the public. So I mean I can go back through and re re revisit that, but the general public usually don't really care about those notes. Uh, at least in the past, they haven't. Um, those are usually more like therapists and stuff like that. And so, um, uh, you know, we just didn't even think about even putting them out there this year. Is equal wood equal to C grade aloes? Um, well, equal wood is actually aloes just from a different country. And so, um, do we still have equal wood on the site? I don't, I don't think we do. I think the old, are you? You're probably referencing uh, evil wood that I've had in the past. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that would be like C ish. Yeah. yeah. E Eaglewood is basically a type of aloes. Yeah. What would be the best oils to mix with my new little spray bottles for pain and healing? My kit just arrived, basically. Oh, well, um, so one of the things you can do is uh, make one marjoram and one cedar and then go back and forth and do the lymphatic technique. And then the other thing that we were going to use that for is we we're going to put about five or six drops of lemongrass in one of them and do the protocol for uh, uh, fascial inflammation or uh, plantar myofasciitis is the technical term, but um, Sometimes with conditions, just to give you guys a heads up, sometimes I have to not say, if we're gonna post it up on YouTube, exactly like a diagnosis, I have to say it in like a little bit of a round, roundabout way um, because putting it up on YouTube is a double-edged sword. And um, because we're doing things that are more energy-based, it, it's, it's okay. But if we're using, like this is a treatment for a particular diagnosis, um, it'll get pulled down. So um, depends on how we word it. And so sometimes I have to change the verbiage a little bit. So. We're good to go, Greg. Okay, so these. we are going to do um, something from the class this last weekend. And um, if you turn, well, if, if you have the pain booklet, it's in the back under techniques to support the healing process associated with pain. And it's number eight, spinal release. And if not, we'll post this protocol for you. Um, on Q and A, mm -hmm. on plant product Q and A, so that you can um, just kind of follow along and then go through and and get the notes off of the Facebook site. And so we are going to do the spinal release. And so this takes into account the um, smooth muscle of the gut, smooth muscle of the respiratory tract, and then we're going to do a little bit of something else. So what I'd like you to do is just move your back around, move it side to side, uh, up up and down. You know, kind of bend forward and back, see how you feel. What page was that again? It's on page 20. 28. 
she she's faster than I am. Yeah. yeah, she'll also be typing in for you guys as Greg tells you what to do. Uh, I'm trying to get her to come more and more to the classes with me with me in person so that she can. <laughs> okay. So your choices are um, Ami Visnaga, Anise, Rosemary, Tarragon, Anna Support, or Higher Consciousness. So if you do not have one of those, uh, let us know so we can help you uh, get a choice. And just type into the chat if you do not have one of those. Okay, so go ahead and begin inhaling. Your awareness is between the eyebrows on the, sin the sinus area or the ajna. Keep inhaling your awareness is on the ajna, the area between the eyebrows. Now move your awareness to the center of the throat. Drop down to the bottom of the throat, the throat minor. And now go under the cheeks, under the cheekbones.
over to the jaws where they hinge in front of the ear canals. Keep inhaling on the jaws. Go to the ear canals themselves, the holes in your ears. Now go to your back heart, the area between your shoulder blades, the back heart. Go to the front solar plexus, the area below the ribs, the upper part of your ab abdomen, known as the front solar plexus. Move your awareness to the back solar plexus, the mid-back area.
Just be still, be aware. Your awareness is on the front solar plexus again. Again, long, slow, deep breaths. Move your awareness to the back solar plexus. Move your awareness over to the spleen on the left hand side below the ribs. Drop down to your navel.
go to your basic chakra, the bottom of your tailbone. And then the soles of your feet. Now just be still, be aware, keep your eyes closed, just let go. Okay, we're gonna do step three. This one, you're gonna use an oil like hyssop, uh, frankincense, uh, spruce, uh, sitka, something of that nature. Okay, if you don't have one of those oils, let us know and we can help you with a choice. Okay, so go ahead and begin inhaling. Your awareness is again between the eyebrows and the sinuses. Oh, you're, it's gonna fall. Oh. Yeah, I'm starting. Keep inhaling on the Ajna, the sinus area. Now move your awareness to the throat, the center of your throat. Drop down to the base of the throat, the throat minor. Drop down to the bottom of the throat, the throat minor, the, the little notch between the two collarbones.
go to the cheek miners, right below each cheekbone. Go to the jaws, the jaw miners, or the jaw hinges in front of the ear. Go to the ear canals, the holes in your ears. And now to the back heart, the area between your shoulder blades. Go to the front solar plexus, area below your ribs, on the upper part of your abdomen. Now go to your back solar plexus, which is your mid back.
Just be still, be aware, just completely let go. Just be still, be aware. Now we're going to do the last step. So here, let me give you some choices. So basal, pedigrine, uh, if you have the blend spasmophilia, so any sort of basal will work, any sort of pedigrine will work. Um, also neroli or the blend spasmophilia. If you don't have any of those, then continue to use whatever you use for the last process. Okay, begin inhaling, your awareness is on your navel. Go to the spleen, the area on the left-hand side, below the ribs. Now go to your low back, your Ming Min. So the opposite of your navel on the back side. Go to the sex chakra, where the sex organs are.
go to the bottom of the tailbone, which is the basic chakra. Go to the soles of your feet. Go to the ankles. Go to the knees, front and back knees. Go to the hips, the sides of the hips. Go to your low back, the bones of your low back.
go to the mid back. Go to the upper back, the area between the shoulder blades. The neck, the cervical area, which are the bones in your neck. Okay, just be still, be aware. How do you feel? Move your back side to side, back and forth, like lean forward, lean back. How are you feeling? So let's get some feedback. And I, I have about five minutes before I need to jump onto another uh, um, call. So um, I can take a question or comment for the next five minutes or so. You can unmute yourself or type in the chat. Relaxed like jello. Yeah, yeah. Z. <laughs> I know it feels good, yeah. It takes out a lot of body tension, it takes out a lot of uh, tension in the spine. A lot of times, if you relax like the feet or the spine or the head, oh, it relaxes the body so, so much. Flexible. Yes. Yeah. So now you could augment this with any sort of um, of the nerve, or excuse me, of the pain protocols. So, like if you were treating nerve pain, you could also do this on top of that, right? So you could add this to the the whole segment because it takes a lot of the tension out. Where if nerve pain, there's a lot of body tension, and it's taking tension off of the spine. So. Okay. Good. I'm glad you guys are nice and relaxed and everything. And I'm yeah. just going to let you guys drift off and um, we will talk again uh, next week. And we'll be home next week. So we'll be in familiar surroundings. Thank you, Greg. You're Safe so travel. welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Love you guys. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, Greg, Greg and Sam. Sam. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Love you. Love you guys too. Take care. Get some good rest. Like let yourself just kind of relax for a little bit. Thank you so much. Thank
Thank you're you so, so welcome. Much. You're so welcome. Bye.